So relative to the distinction between learning and performance is a theoretical distinction that has guided a great deal of our research. It's a distinction between what we call retrieval strength, how accessible something is right now, and storage strength, which is kind of a measure of how connected is this with everything else we know. And these two things can be very different. So for example, something from your past, the name of a high school friend, a street address, a phone number, a combination lock that you may have had recalled automatically many years ago, can become completely inaccessible and unrecallable. We all experience that. But at the same time that it's completely inaccessible, which means it has almost no retrieval strength, it's actually in your memory at full strength by another measure, namely storage strength. Strange as it may seem, forgetting creates the opportunities for additional higher levels of learning. I mean, often people will think, learning is building up something in my memory. Forgetting is losing some of what I built up. That only is not only not accurate, in certain respects it's completely wrong. Because what happens, the very conditions that produce forgetting, spacing, change of context, reducing cues, all those things that will produce forgetting are the very things that then enhance learning when you in fact uh, get a chance to study the material again. So there's, there's many, many examples of this and this kind of fundamental asymmetry that the, the higher the level of storage strength that you have, the more rapidly you gain retrieval strength, the more slowly you lose retrieval strength. That makes good common sense. But the unintuitive part is, the higher the level of retrieval strength, the lower the gains you will get in storage strength. So keeping something very accessible, recallable, massing it, and so on, uh, will in fact keep retrieval strength high, but not lead to the learning that's the target. Just an everyday example is if I learn something in one place and then I'm later back and tested in that place or you test me in some different place, in general, I'll recall more if I'm back in the same setting, a kind of context effect. But actually, if you don't test me, but you have me study the material again, research we did years ago say that I will then learn better when I studied in two different places. So even though the context change will induce forgetting, it will enhance learning, and I'll remember better later on. And that has a lot of implications. Any little booklets you'll pick up on a college campus about how to study will tell you to find some one place and do all your studying in that place. But these kind of results say that may help to get you to study. But if you want to recall what you're studying, you should study in more than one place. So many aspects of this are counterintuitive and they don't correspond to what people simply do on their own based on their own habits or own intuitions.